We believe that all men are created equal. The magnificent mosaic that is America. Radio beacon to radio beacon. I have a dream. Change has come to America. Believe me. Help is on the way. Knock, knock. Who's there? Hey! It's a figment of your imagination. Randy Rhodes Show. Turn up your mind. I'll say to you tonight that I can't guarantee you success in what I'm about to do. But I guarantee you that at the end of it, you will have no doubt in your mind who I am and what I stand for and whether I deserve it. So that's why I came back to St. Anselm's, and that's why I came back to Manchester, and that's why I came back to New Hampshire to tell all of you that I intend to seek the Republican nomination for President of the United States in 2024, and I want your support. Beware of the leader who won't admit any of those shortcomings. Because you know what the problem is with a leader like that? A leader like that thinks America's greatness resides in the mirror he's looking at. I believe that America's greatness resides out there, among all of you. And that any of us who get the opportunity to serve are merely temporary stewards of that greatness, who just want an opportunity to make it a little bit greater. And if you can't admit to the people you want to lead that you're not going to be perfect, and if you decide that the people who you ask to come with you to lead will always be the ones who are blamed when anything goes wrong, that they'll be called names, that they'll be dismissed, and that after they leave your service, they're nothing but idiots. Beware, because that leader not only will not serve you, they will not be able to find anybody who will serve them. And a lonely, self-consumed, self-serving mirror hog <laughs> is not a leader. <laughs> Randy, who's... Who's he referring to? Uh, so he's been back and forth on Trump so much he's going to need his own HOV lane on the George Washington Bridge. I, I honestly, and you know, you know what uh, was left out of that mashup there? Right before he went into this, uh, you know, you have to take responsibility for the mistakes you make, and if you don't, then you're not really a leader, and that you're a bad man, you're a you're you're a liar, you're a piece of crap, you're a piece of dung, you're a a mirror hog, you're a lonely, isolated uh, narcissist. Is basically where, right before he said that. He said, with regard to Bridgegate, which I don't know if everybody remembers what the hell that was, but with regards to Bridgegate, he said he had taken advice from stupid and bad people. And that's why he ended up in so much trouble when he decided to close down the George Washington Bridge Lanes, leaving New Jersey, headed for New York, in retaliation for the mayor of Fort Lee, New Jersey, a guy named Sokolich, who wouldn't endorse him. It was purely a political theater game that caused New Yorkers and New Jerseyites who commute back and forth between these two states to work every single damn day. The, the most heartbreaking uh, you know, uh, 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 amount of, of standstill came to a screeching halt traffic to the point where cars were piled up in downtown Fort Lee and his staff, Christie's staff, who swore up and down in court that Christie knew about it, that Christie authorized it, that Christie was part of it. They, they, they literally were texting each other about why they were doing this time for time for a traffic jam in Fort Lee as retaliation for a mayor, a mayor of Fort Lee, New Jersey, for not endorsing Chris Christie. But right before he said, you know, and, and beware of the leader who doesn't take responsibility, he said that the reason why that happened was because he had listened to stupid people. <laughs> it was just, it was priceless. It was classic Chris Christie. Pure Chris Christie. But here he is. He's, he's like, uh, I'm going to go out there and I'm going to take out Donald Trump. I'm going to do it. I'm going to get him. And in this weird way, 
It could be fun. It could be fun to watch. Let me be very clear. I am going out there to take out Donald Trump, but here's why. Yeah. I want to win. <laughs> and I don't want him to win. And guess what? If you put DeSantis and Haley and Pence and Tim Scott, <laughs> that's it, I'll stop there. On truth serum, they tell you the same thing. Here's the difference. Here's the difference. You have to put me on truth serum to tell you. Okay? So that's why. There are not multiple lanes to the Republican nomination. No. That is a political science professor's dream. There is one lane to the Republican nomination, and he's in front of it. And if you want to win, you better go right through him. Because let me guarantee you something from knowing him for 22 years, everybody. He's going to try to go through me. And he's going to try to go through Ron and Nikki and Tim and anybody else who stands in his way. And you've watched this show. <laughs> A bridge reference, a lane reference. Yeah, there's only one lane, everybody. I mean, he just can't, uh, he just can't. But uh, it could be fun. I mean, am I rooting for Chris Christie in the Republican primary? Sure, yeah, why not? Yeah, sure. Why not? Why not? Do you think Chris Christie could beat Joe Biden? Listen, Joe Biden's record as president of the United States going into 2024, which obviously has already begun, is uh, pristine. It's it's an amazing record. I mean, 13 million new jobs. Yes, some of them were people going back to work after the COVID, which Biden was able to get vaccines out to everybody to coordinate what Donald Trump said he would do for the big hoax. And that was, uh, you know, a warp speed or some crap. It never happened. Biden was able to get tests in the mail. He was able to get shots at the drugstore. He was able to do anything and everything that uh, plus get money in people's pockets while we were waiting for, you know, immunity to build in our country right i mean he did it all and then followed it up with the you know massive massive pieces of uh, legislation the infrastructure uh you know the infrastructure building that was a bipartisan i mean bipartisan hello didn't everybody say oh that's dead that's a that's a you know last uh, way of life that doesn't exist bipartisan infrastructure package okay then we got the inflation reduction act that made the largest investment in green energy in the history of the world right here in the United States. Now, you might, again, not believe that climate change is a thing. You might believe that it's a hoax. But I'll tell you who believes it's real. All state insurance. You know who else thinks it's real? State farm insurance. You know who else thinks it's real? Anybody that, home, that, that uh, insures homeowners. OK, because they're canceling their policies in places where there are massive increases in wildfires. They're canceling their policies where there are massive increases in hurricane damage, where roofs get ripped. They don't want to pay. So I had always said, and, you know, for anybody who's been, a, you know, a loyal client of ours for however many years it's been, you remember when I wasn't sure if climate change was a, a thing. I wasn't sure. I wanted to see science. I wanted, and I said to you what my guidepost would be, okay? I said, when the actuaries at the insurance companies start telling you that they don't want to insure people anymore because of the risk, the risk is so great in flood zones, the risk is so great in fire zones, the risk is so great in hurricane, uh, the path of hurricanes, and they don't want to be a part of the insurance uh, carriers anymore for people that live in those environments, then I'll know it's real. Now, now I know it is. Of course, that happened way before. But honestly, honestly, so we got that. We got this massive investment, which is going to help us build factories across the Rust Belt, reinvigorate the Rust Belt, okay? The Chips and Science Act, where we're going to build, uh, you know, uh, uh, microchip factories, Wages are up. We have historic unemployment lows. And they're going to, they're, they're, I don't care who runs against Biden. I honestly don't. I really don't. But I will tell you this, Chris. If you want to be a Republican who hates Trump, you need to leave the Republican Party because they own him. Don't have time to listen to the live show? Want to hear more on your schedule? Go to randyroads.com and buy a stinking podcast.